Hello, uh, my name is William. I am from Bremen, Germany, and I am the programmer of uh, PIFLAB. PIFLAB is a program um, that can derive velocity information from image data using a method called particle image velocimetry. The software was a joint project together with Professor uh, Isaac Stamhaus to, that I did during my PhD studies. And my PhD studies were on uh, the unsteady aeronamics of flapping bird wings. And when I started these studies, actually there was no suitable software available in the lab. And as my measurements would be done in pseudo 3D, I would be confronted with a huge amount of data during the analysis of the flapping wings. And this data would be processed in MATLAB anyway. So writing a PIV tool in the MATLAB environment actually made quite a lot of sense at that time. Originally, PIFLAB only had some very basic features, but over the years, I added more and more features that were driven by my personal demand and also by the demand of the students that I was working with. I noticed in the past that PIFLAB became a popular scientific tool for analysis of flow features or movements and images. Um, for example, there were studies on the movement of sand and gravel motion, uh, studies on cell motion, blood flow, fluid dynamics, of course, um, flow mapping of rivers, and also 3D printing or even dam breaching. Um, and in this video, I would like to show how to work with uh, PIFLA. I would like to give a quick introduction to the software. I'm not going too much into detail. If you are uh, really interested in the details of particle image velocimetry, then there is a book called Particle Image Velocimetry, a Practical Guide by Ruffel, Willard and Kompenhans. And the whole software of PIFLAB is based on the ideas and the principles presented in this book. It's a really good book, uh, really easy to understand. There's also a paper available in the Journal of Open Research Software. That paper focuses on PIVLAB, of course. Then there is a chapter in my PhD thesis, pretty um, extensive chapter. And I also have a tutorial in my blog. So I will put the links in the video description of this video so you can have a look at this information. Okay, let's begin right away with a quick view at the tool. So obviously we will start MATLAB for this. The first thing that you have to do is to navigate to your PIFLAB folder and then you would start PIFLAB GUI.M. Of course, the first step you would actually have to perform is to load your image data. Um, you can yeah, load bitmaps, JPEGs or TIFFs, whatever you want. You can change the sequencing style here and let us load some example data that you also have, you add them to your list and then you import them. And what we want to do now, we open the images, we now want to define region of interest and also a mask. So I will just select my region of interest here. Let's take this. This is the most interesting part of the flow. And I will draw a mask for this image because here in this region, we have a black cylindrical rod and I want to exclude that rod from the analysis. So I will draw a mask here around this cylindrical rod that actually refracts all the light. Okay. And I will apply this mask to all the frames and I will again zoom out to see the whole image. This is how it looks. Then the next step you actually uh, want to do is to pre-process your image data. All these steps are actually done automatically also. They have some uh, default settings that are fine for most of your data, um, but I will show you anyway how this works. So we have different pre-processing filters. For example, the, here the contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization. Um, that enhances the contrast locally in the image. You can have a look at it. If you press preview, then you see what it actually does. You can see that the contrast is enhanced quite dramatically. You could also enable the high pass filter that will only emphasize the high frequency changes in your image data. So particles in this uh, case. You could also do intensity capping um, that sort of equalizes the uh, 
size and intensity of the particle data. And if you have very noisy data, you can also use a denoise filter, a wiener to denoise filter. But I don't want that. I only want the contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization. So the next step that I will do, I will um, set the PIV settings and I want to use the fast Fourier transform uh, window deformation technique to analyze my data. I want to use four passes. The first pass should have pretty large interrogation areas. So you really um, capture the high velocity flow information. And then you should gradually decrease your um, your integration size. This is now set up. You can also see here how big the integration areas actually are. First pass is pretty big, then it becomes smaller and even smaller. And now the next step is to actually start your analysis. Um, I will analyze all the frames that I loaded. You can see how the resolution of the velocity information increases with every step. And now you can scroll through your time resolved image data. So after your analysis is finished, the next step would be to uh, calibrate your data. Um, we don't have a calibration image for this data set right now, but I can select uh, reference distance also in this image. This is not very accurate, but for this quick example, it will work. So we select a reference distance. I remember the real distance or the real diameter of this rod was 30 millimeters and the time step from one image to the other image was 2.5 milliseconds. Now we can apply this calibration. And if we now click on any of these vectors here at the side, we will see that the U components, the horizontal flow velocity was 0.2 meters per second, about 0.2 meters per second, and that is fine because I remember correctly, the flow velocity of the water tunnel here in this experiment was actually 0.2 meters per second. So that's pretty okay. And after we finish the calibration, the next step is to validate the vectors because we have some vectors that are too large. So there are errors in the correlation and we want to get rid of these. So we click on vector validation and the simplest validation method for validating velocities is actually to set a window with allowed velocities and non-allowed velocities. And that's what we do here. We want to display all the results in the following plot. And now we select the velocity limits. This is a scatter plot of U velocities and V velocities. Um, and we can already see that here there is an outlier. It's a huge velocity that's completely out of the normal velocity range. And here we also have an outlier. So I will select a rectangle here. This is the valid velocity information that I want to allow. And all the remaining vectors should be discarded. And I will just apply this to all my data set. And what you can see is that these vectors, these last vectors have disappeared and they were replaced automatically by interpolated data. I would also like to show you how to display some parameters of the data. For example, we can have a look at the velocity magnitude in our data and we want to have a colored representation of the velocity magnitude. I just selected in this list, you can see there's a lot of stuff you can actually do. Velocity magnitude and apply it to all the frames. And now you have a colored representation of the velocity magnitude. If you want to show, because you don't know actually what these colors mean, so you can display also a color bar and that works by modify plot appearance and you can display a color bar and also set where it should be. It should be in the west. I apply this and now you can see your color bar here. You can do a lot of more data extractions in PIVLAB. I want to show you one more thing that you can do, one simple thing. You can also extract parameters from a line. So in this case, we just draw a line. We want to have a line here. We want to extract data along this line. And what we want to show, what do we want to show? We Let's just show the U component, so the horizontal velocity component. And we can plot the data and what you see now is actually what you would expect. 
high velocities um, at the side of the cylinder, very low flow velocities uh, behind the cylinder and then the velocity goes high again. So this is what we expect. You can actually extract a lot of data along the lines. You can extract the data uh, inside areas. You can integrate data in an area. You can also integrate over the line. So actually everything that you want to do, you can do it within PIFLA. But there's of course also an option to export the data for processing it uh, in other software or for processing it directly in MATLAB. And all the data formats you can export to, you find it in the file menu under save. You can save it in the PIFLAB format. You can also save images or movies. You can save it to um, text files, uh, normal MATLAB files. You can also save to the um, Paraview VTK format. That was pretty handy. Paraview is a very powerful um, data exploration tool that I would really recommend. So you can use this to directly export to Paraview. Um, you can export everything to the MATLAB workspace so you can directly have a look at all the data. Um, and you can also save your current PIVLAB settings if you want to apply these settings in a later study. So this was a small introduction for PIVLAB. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.